Oh, hi. Sorry. Yeah, you just caught me doing some running. Uh, I do really like running, I have to say. It, uh, it gives you a sense of achievement and purpose on days that might otherwise be filled with nothing. Uh, Sundays, for example, or in my case, every Valentine's Day. Um, I went for a long, a really long run on Valentine's Day this year. And it was great, it was, it was really lovely. But uh, what people say to me, Carl, you can't run away from your feelings forever. Well, maybe I can. Uh, I certainly ran 10 miles away from them that day. But then, my route was a loop. So I ended up right back where I forget that. Forget that as a bad example. Um, it is a tough world out there. One day recently, I was running uh, around school closing time. And I passed by a group of schoolgirls that can't have been more than about 11 or 12 years old. And, uh, and one of them suddenly hunched over, started jogging in a exaggerated, deranged and haggard style I immediately recognised as my own. Children can be so cruel. How would she like it if I followed her home and started mocking her while she was doing her homework? Not at all was the answer to that question. Not at all. Another problem with running though is that, like a conservative government, it can be quite tough on the joints. I've had more injury complaints than a no-win, no-fee law firm. Ankle problems, foot injuries, knee pains. I also have quite a lot of hip problems. I can never decide what art house film to go to, or what's my favourite brand of hummus. Though that's to get off the point somewhat. Though one of the ways I try to avoid injury is by swimming a lot. I really quite love swimming. One of the nicest moments of a swim is the first length after the first break you take. Your body is full of oxygen, so you glide through the water effortlessly, technique working perfectly. You only have to take one or two breaths in the entire length, and you wonder what's so difficult about this whole swimming thing. You feel like you've achieved mastery of the aquatic world, scoffing at the middle-aged flounderers in the slow lane beside you. Of course, at some point during the very next length, you'll be back to normal, flailing breathlessly through the water, barely able to stay afloat, and wondering where it all went wrong. Running a lot has also had a big effect on my diet. I've tended to cook at home for myself quite a bit, which has led to me losing my mind ever so slightly. Um, as time went on, I realised that it was more efficient to cook enough food for a number of nights and uh, keep the rest in the fridge or the freezer. But uh, what started out as a handy time-saving measure quickly snowballed out of control as I became obsessed with stockpiling dinners in plastic containers in the freezer. Like some kind of miser with a savings account, consumed by the need to hoard more and more until I was rich beyond my wildest imagination. Though food doesn't really work like that. Um, it did actually get to the point that I felt bad when I ate at dinner because it was depleting my reserves. I think it's what might be termed an unhealthy relationship with food. I think I'm over it now though. Um, with interest rates the way they are, there's no incentive to save the food anymore. I've actually started borrowing. Northern Rock have actually given me a very good deal and some risotto for this evening. So when running away from my problems doesn't take me far enough, travelling is an handy alternative. Um, I was in New York this summer and Argentina last year, which was particularly fascinating. Um, I think it takes uh, experiencing another culture at first hand to make you uh, take a step back and appreciate certain aspects of your own culture a bit more and possibly understand them a bit better. Um, so there were a few things in Argentina uh, that I noticed that you'd never get away with back home. Particularly, um, I was walking down the street one day and I passed by a baker's and in the window I saw a tray full of round cakes with uh, covered in brown icing and with big bulging white eyes coming from the top and enormous thick pink lips. Um, if it wasn't already obvious what they were me meant to represent, there was a handy sign above them that said Africanos. Um, I didn't try one for obvious reasons, but I can only presume they're deliciously on PC. Unfortunately, hooliganism is still a major issue at domestic football matches in Argentina. But one day, before we headed off to a River Plate game, one of my friends decided it would be a good time to tell me the story she'd read about someone getting stabbed 17 times for a phone at a game, which sounded absolutely horrific. But then I wondered how it got that far, 17 times for a phone. Even if you're feeling belligerent, would you not just hand the phone over after a few stabs? let alone 17. 
Just how valuable was the phone? Was the person lying on the ground, covered in the blood of 16 stab wounds, screaming from my cold dead hands, while secretly thinking, yeah, one more here and I'll just have to give it to them?